Jackie? Yeah, Jackie Juwan, our series is called Unprecedented. That's the word that best describes the scope of this summer's fires in Australia. Today, we focus on an ecological disaster, the decimation of Australia's wildlife. Many animal species in Australia exist nowhere else in the world, and they face the very real threat of extinction. Could climate change also bring a wildlife disaster right here to South Florida? Amid the unprecedented devastation in Australia, an unfathomable catastrophe. Not millions, but billions of native animals lost. A wildlife disaster. It remains to be seen just exactly what that is going to do for our sense of identity in Australia. That identity is most commonly defined with two iconic species, the kangaroo and the koala. Both of their populations have been devastated. New Year's Eve blazes ripped across the south coast, including in Mogo. Ray Harvey runs Wild to Free Kangaroo Sanctuary here. That's the firebreak in the Mogo. She was forced to flee by boat and watch this peninsula burn. You have kangaroos that obviously depend on you to a certain extent. What was that like being out there and, and looking back at that? I thought they were all going to be dead, every single one. But there were survivors, and Harvey is again taking care of them. This is honey. She's in critical condition and we can't treat her just yet. We've lost about two thirds of the population here and we have some that are injured and we have some that are perfectly fine. So it's my job and many other wildlife carers down here feel it's their responsibility to keep them alive. The fires have pressed other wildlife experts into emergency action. A dozen koala were rescued from the Blue Mountains and brought here, the Taronga Zoo in Sydney. Those animals who were lucky enough to survive the fire face another potentially deadly threat the almost total loss of their food supply. But the ultimate threat to both of these species lies with the planet's biggest challenge. This wasn't an ordinary fire. This was a climate change disaster and a tornado. What does climate change look like for the koala population? The koala before drought, before the fires, you know, was already a species of challenge. Um, you know, there was a potential that koala could become extinct in the next 30 years. You know, these bushfires have, have really just elevated that. What you see in Australia now is a result of extreme climate changes. Ron McGill has dedicated a lifetime to animals, and he sees a growing threat of climate change to our native species. We could lose in the next 50 years over 1 million species of animals, primarily associated with climate change. One foot uh, sea level rise will wipe out half of the habitat for most of the animals that live uh, in the Everglades. The key deer, here's an animal that lives basically on a key that is only a few feet above sea level. One foot rise in sea level could wipe out the entire population of key deer. The manatee, with the warming of the oceans, you've got uh, algae blooms, you've got red tide. When it comes to fires, when it comes to hurricanes, when it comes to droughts, all those things have catastrophic effects and are in the future for us if things don't change. Protect your animals. This was called the nature coast. Now it's gone. Don't let yours go. Because we've lost ours and I'm heartbroken. We are happy to report that all of Ray Harvey's injured kangaroos are now recovered. And meanwhile, Ron McGill and Zoo Miami have shown their support for Australia's wildlife. Their two-month-old baby koala has been named Hope in honor of what's going on there. For the in-depth version of this story, visit NBC6.com and search Unprecedented. Tomorrow, we're going to explore the alarming coral crisis of Australia's Great Barrier Reef. Mm. You know, Angie, um, when you talk about numbers, it's unfathomable to believe and to hear that one billion animals died as a result of yeah. those fires. Now, when yeah. you're talking about those individual numbers and are, how many species of that billion? So millions. I mean, it's it's very difficult to estimate right now. There still is, uh, you know, a lot that has to go into them researching exactly what has happened, especially because there's still fires going on in those areas. So the recovery now from here on out through the rest of the wildfire season, which is still going on, it really is in the peak season there. Um, it's still to come. We'll see what happens with that but a lot of those animals still facing more challenges with food supply invasive species coming yeah. in 
uh, so a lot, a lot to deal with. You know, and, and Ron McGill, he broke it down right there, but talk about a little bit more about the connection and the similarities with South Florida and Australia and why the South Floridians need to pay close attention to climate change. Yeah, Ron and I had a, a very interesting conversation, mostly about uh, habitat and how the loss of habitat, uh, you know, it, it would be devastating to many things. The, the panther, the Florida panther, of course, which is already uh, a species of challenges right here in South Florida. He mentioned the manatee, the key deer, something that always comes top of, top of mind. But I think one of the interesting things is the smaller animals, things like pollinators. It's a chain reaction, right? So mm -hmm. you have animals that you and insects that you lose and then the pollination, yeah. you're not you're affecting agriculture. So it's it's really um, something I think that South Floridians uh, need to pay attention to. And that's why yes. we're here telling you about these stories from uh, Australia. It is a trickle down effect. Yeah. Okay. Yes, it is.